good evening and welcome to this week's edition and episode of the minority report i'm marilyn david your host and i am in studio with you and we are up and running ready to go ready to share information to spread good news to keep you the public up to date with what is happening in Tobago and what is happening in our backyard so to speak uh, this evening as per usual it is indeed a pleasure to be here with you to come into your homes to come into your living room some of you your bedrooms some of you your porches some of you are, are over at your neighbors houses uh, some of your neighbors are over in your homes and and the minority report is now a family uh, type program where persons come together and just share and spend that time I, I was speaking to someone just yesterday who said to me that a very young person and and they said to me that you know they look at the program and they are so intrigued by the discussions that we have on the program the the fact what draws them the most the fact that the program is always well researched the information that is presented it all is always presented in a clear and understand man and you know they they said as a young person somebody who is working and out there they felt uh, good to, to know that there is at least an entity within the public domain that comes to the people and not just uh, talk but comes to the people and presents uh, supporting documents supporting information and so on and that that conversation was it felt very uh, rewarding from the standpoint of you know persons are indeed listening uh, uh, everywhere that <clears throat> that we find ourselves uh, persons are always willing to engage in in conversation and share uh, what they know share their experiences even from the program things that they would have heard discussions that they actually follow through on and you know it, it is always encouraging and i want to say thank you to the general public um sometimes the, the the things become so overwhelming there's so much happening at any one given time but i want to formally thank you the general public for first of all your faith in the, the minority council the minority leader minority councillor as the case may be and and in their mandate the 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 call as it will that they have to to hold administration accountable but more so to be accountable to all the people of to be able to represent the voices of all persons and you know it's sometimes persons think that the minority leader the minority councillor they only represent the voices of persons who don't support the administration but on the contrary they actually represent every single tobagonian every single one because if you are walking down a pathway two persons and i know one and i don't know the other one or the other one doesn't agree with me on on anything and i know there's a ditch it is my responsibility to tell the both persons that listen if you continue walking down this path you can fall into that ditch further up the person who i i am very comfortable friendly with would definitely take my word and say oh thanks a lot the other person there has a choice to say okay no problem or just continue but not because that person may not agree with me on everything it means that i must not take the responsibility to warn that individual of pending danger and that represents in a great sense the the voice of the minority in tobago the minority represents everyone even if you don't support the minority because there are things that i'm certain and that i've experienced many persons walk up to me walk up to the minority leader walk up to the minority counselor even in different places and would have identified things that were discussed on the program that they had no idea of they they didn't know it was happening they didn't understand how it was happening and it was only when when the clarity came from the program that they actually were like oh this now makes sense so so that is the mandate to, to to represent every single individual 
and to be able to put information out that everyone can benefit from that information. So if you're viewing us this evening, you can continue doing so on the Tobago Updates website. You can view us on the Tobago Updates YouTube channel. And the platform that many persons seek to take to is the, the Facebook page. Uh, feel free, if you are on the Facebook page, to share with us your comments, to engage and to join in the live stream, to engage in meaningful, respectful conversation. And I always ask persons uh, to be respectful in your know, conversing and the presenting of information. Uh, because there are children as well who... who look at the program so we want to be able to keep it clean keep it respectful however feel free to share your opinion and to share your points and you can do so by engaging in conversation or live with other persons uh, if you are subscribed however to the amplia network you can turn your television to channel one zero two that's channel one zero two on the amplia network and you can view the Tobago Updates platform live where we have the Minority Report and all day programming. So you don't even have to switch. You don't have to touch your dial. Just set it to 102 and you will be satisfied with programming from morning to night time and programming for all ages. So feel free, get that Amplia up, get your 102 up and running and just sit back, rock back and enjoy the programming as it unfolds. However, tonight, on the Minority Report, if you are willing to make a comment to share some information, whether it's voice notes, whether it's a photograph, whether it's a video, you can do so as well. 284-6597. That's 284-6597. Or you can also dial 356 Eight eight three three. That's three five six eight eight three three. And you can feel free to share your information. Uh, one thing that we always try to encourage is for instance to 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 send us information. It, you don't have to say your name. Um, we don't have to know you. Once the information is credible, factual, obviously we will do our own fact check. But feel free to send us information and I want to publicly thank those who would have already taken time and made the efforts to send us information that has in fact gone a long way in assisting us in putting the pieces together. Uh, it, this, this is like a, a game of level or building blocks. Uh, oftentimes you have one piece of information and then someone else says something else and then someone else says something else and by the time you get information from everyone you get an entire picture of what it is you are trying to discuss so this evening is no different we are going to be putting pieces together from information that we've gathered from the media and otherwise even persons whistleblowers and so on and we are going to continue to provide and present that information uh, without fear of contradiction without fear of persecution without fear of being blacklisted and and we know that those are just a few of the strategies that have been used in the past and continue to be used to muzzle this minority and the population by extension so folks those are the platforms uh, the information is there i'm asking you to continue sharing the live let's get as many people on board as possible and we are going to take a very short break pay some bills early up so that we can have the program running uninterrupted as we get into the meat of some of the matters so stay logged on stay locked on and share live share the live share the live
format Glamorgan Youth Foundation Annual Regatta. Only the toughest will survive. Watch as teams viciously compete in various events, triathlon, obstacle course, and bamboo out race on the Great Dog River. Only the bravest of sailors dare race on the waters of Richmond Bay. Principal Pan, after passing powered by the Street 91.9 FM Tobago. Cash prizes to one and so much more. Action starts at 8.30 a.m. down at Richmond Bay. For more information, please contact 375-3835 or 776-9193. So, who will you represent? It's March Madness at the Distributors Limited. Get $100 back for every $1,000 used major appliance deal on Frigidus, Samsung, and more. Plus, Sunday financing options available. Miss out. Sale ends March 31st. Under never beaten on quality and price. The best place to stay in Tobago is at Thorns Place with rates starting as low as 200 TT. Call or WhatsApp 705-7306-682-867. are located uptown 5 minutes away from the port at Thorns Place. Our aim is to make your stay safe and affordable. Folks, and we are back on the Minority Report in studio with me this evening. Uh, it always gives me pleasure to introduce uh, to the, the microphone, the podium, the camera, everything. Um, Assemblyman Kelvon Morris, the Minority Leader, who is with us this evening, ready and, and, and raring to go. So let me say good night to you, Marlon, and good night to our viewers, our listeners, our loyal supporters who tune in every Tuesday to join us as we have very enlightening conversations on matters important to Tobago and Tobagoans. So I look forward to you know sharing some updates as to where we are as a minority, the work that I'm doing as an assemblyman in my electoral district, and. Also, we'll talk about some visioning where we believe Tobago should be going, where the, where the focus should be, and also we'll raise matters that we believe that are of public importance that you, the public, ought to know and that you, the public, should really have a say in. So I look forward to us having a healthy debate and a healthy discussion this evening. Uh, so, so, Minority Leader, we... we you mentioned a bit in terms of, you know, accounting to the people as it pertains to what the minority has been doing. We, we have seen a number of sit-ins um, thus far in this term, and the minority is always very present in the House, um, very articulate and so on, uh, presenting information, asking questions, and, and at the appointed time, bringing the private motion, private members' motion to the House. Uh, share with, with us, the listening public as well, um, what are some of the things that, that in terms of, of questions that are being asked, because a lot of persons 
don't really understand the whole process. What is the reason for asking questions? Is it that the administration is obligated to answer? Is the minority within its right to ask these questions and so on? What are some of the questions and, and, and how is this impacting on Tobago? Well, what we, the questions that we ask in the House are really based on information we would have received and we use uh, those information as reference point to have those information ventilated in the public by a lot of them is asked for oral answers and uh, therefore you'd see us asking some probing questions um you know from time to time we are not allowed to ask questions in the way we would hope uh, that they should be asked and answered but uh, not, nevertheless we continue to press on you would have seen played out in the house recently a secretary blatantly refusing to hmm. answer a question that he himself brought in the public domain by presenting a statement in the house and hmm. that was uh, with respect to the private jet arrangement and he the secretary told us that he received um support from his wide network hmm. which could have included family could have included friends and so forth and we just wanted him to be a little more specific as to who exactly provided that support when he himself was not able to utilize his credit card and so forth and we are talking about something as i i think he said the trip to utilize the private jet cost sixty nine thousand oh, dollars so wow. you could imagine where in this world or who in this world was so benevolent who <laughs> was so kind to just give this secretary sixty nine thousand dollars to be able to fly on a private jet and the secretary refused and that is where we are we continue to ask the questions we continue to probe we continue to bring to life some of the information that you yourself may not be aware of but what i can tell to big ones that a lot is happening in secrecy hmm. thankfully there are there are enough concerned to Begonians who continue to blow the whistle and we continue to encourage them to blow the whistle and we will protect your identity. You have a very responsible minority leader, a very responsible political leader of the PNM. And as we get the information, we ensure that to the best of our ability, we protect those of you who are, I call you patriots of Tobago mm -hmm. who I want to see the best for Tobago. I want to ensure that whoever is seated in the seat of power would, would do right by the people of Tobago. So I continue to applaud you, continue to encourage you to bring forth the information and we'll utilize that information responsibly because those who take the oath of office to serve the people must do that and not serve themselves. Well, very, very well said. I know, and a lot of people see you in the capacity as a minority leader, and I sometimes forget. forget that you are also a with special <laughs> function and, and purposeful uh, responsibility for Daryl Spring Wim. Uh, I, I know it, it's a mammoth task, because as minority leader, you are minority leader for all of Tobago. Uh, but, but tell us a bit of, of your electoral district function what are some of the things that has been happening um i i would also like you to to, to ventilate uh, some of the challenges because we know we had some challenges um even last year and so on i i think some of them may even be continuing but so, let's hear so it, it it has been a very very challenging time for me because it's challenging both on the side of the minority representing all of tobago under i can tell you extremely difficult yeah. circumstances and then as a lone pnm representative in a, a house and um, dominated by the executive 14 well 13 one one and sometimes you don't know where that one is. Sometimes he's hither, hither, <laughs> and wither. So we really don't know. But at the end of the day, I am trying to represent my electoral district. And we see it playing out day after day. Just recently, you would have seen um, TV6 carrying a story about mm -hmm. the Mount Mary Road. Yeah. And that is a road we've been advocating for while I was representative for the electoral district of Black Rock Wimps Brigade, mm -hmm. 
we would have engaged the attention of the Division of Infrastructure and that, that Mount Mary Smithfield road was identified as a very critical yeah. road because it, it really threatens the life and livelihood of the residents there. There's a, we know that there's a building, the commercial building mm -hmm. that really and truly can fall at any time. And then there's some residential properties there that is really on duress because of the, the yeah. earth movements and the, the topography of the land there. And so, a, a, a topography survey was um, commissioned and that was to inform a design that would help to mitigate against from the movement and all, the earth movement and all that. Uh, that was in train. As far as I understand, there's a 2022 study which, uh, with recommendations as, how, as to how to go about uh, the mitigation and uh, the securing of the residential space. And uh, even after the chief secretary gave a commitment to the people of that area on public TV at the, <laughs> at the, that those, what I call the comedy show that they used to be going around and pretending yeah, like if they're yeah. taking up people concerns, issues, and, issues just mm -hmm. some mama guy people, yeah. the mama guy show. And even in, even while publicly going on record and giving commitment to the residents, a year later, mm. nothing has been done except to close the road and the, the the residents are living in complete fear. We are seeing the Montpelier Road. That road is one of the worst roads in Tobago. In Tobago. Correct. And even more critical now, that road, because the Idlewild Connector Road, the Idlewild Trace Road, they are doing remedial work there because that road basically collapsed mm -hmm. coming out of the last set of torrential um, rainfall and bad weather that we had. That road collapsed. And uh, the, so it means that Mount Pilar Road becomes a significant access and connector for yeah. people coming from the Providence into Scarborough, Glen Road, etc., etc. And f don't care how much we beg, how much we plead, how much we mm. highlight, how much we write. They have skipped, they have passed over that road, around that road. I don't know what the people of Montpelier have done to this Secretary of Infrastructure, hmm. but for God in heaven's sake, he continues to ignore the people of Montpelier, continue to ignore the people of Dara Spring. Man, we have been really under the cuss. So what I've been doing is trying to ensure that we keep the young people very engaged, continue to provide as much opportunities for skills training. We really try to channel young people into private sector employment because while the THA, through their different divisions, are employing people, they continue to ignore my request to assist the young people in my electoral district. We continue to provide family-focused activities. So, you know, we have our sports and family day, which mm -hmm. is well attended because Very we much understand so. that the family is a fabric of the community and if you have strong families you would have strong communities mm -hmm. and safe communities as well so we continue to have them very engaged during the christmas and uh, you would see me from time to time i walk almost every week sometimes i take a break about give myself a little time to recuperate yeah. and we go again but we try to keep continuous community engagement through these walks and i just enjoy interacting with the residents i just enjoy going out hearing from them, meeting them, you know, learning so much about the, their experiences and sharing as well mine. And uh, it is that kind of interconnectedness uh, that, you know, we keep the district going in spite of and despite of the challenges. I, I know, um, I, as, as you hinted there, and it's something that I, I was going to actually raise again, you, you have a, a strict system with walkabouts um, and it's something that that from getting into office that that you have been very consistent okay. with I I know so many times you hear people even now the general sentiment throughout the island is that nobody sees their representatives and and persons tend to say you hear the excuses well 
um, we in a division and, and we have so much to do. But yet still, you, even though being minority leader, um, I, I know the schedule sometimes you have, but you've still been able to maintain that, that contact with the people. And when the photos are posted, I don't think anybody can, can argue with the, the, the warm welcome that you received from both children I saw last week. It was you were playing a little racing, some <laughs> football with a small man who, who seemed to be in his glee, just looking on and so on. And then sometimes you see some of our, our elderly citizens. You can tell that they appreciate the fact that you make that effort. And I mean, we're going to touch a bit on that later on in the program because we have some people who profess to be leaders mm -hmm. who continue to attack our elders in, in Tobago and speak in derogatory manner about them. You know, so your walkabouts. I, I wanted you to share a bit of the sentiments. Well, you see, it starts with a love for people. Genuine, just a love to be amongst the people to whom you represent and once you it, it just feels like everywhere I go feels like home to me because mm. you know there's not a home in the electoral district that I'm not warmly welcomed and then it doesn't mean that everybody supports Kelvon or mm. everybody supports the PNM but it is a mutual respect and you know it starts with respecting people's view and people opinion and I don't expect that everything I say that people would agree mm -hmm. with or everything that people say I myself may agree with, mm -hmm. but is understanding that we can agree to disagree and disagree respectfully. And so, it, you know, it is about keeping that connection as well going out. It, it's something I've said. I pride myself because I was fortunate to be mentored by Mrs. Claudia Groom Duke and that is something I always admired about her. Mm -hmm. That you know her her the way she related with every resident. It didn't matter to Mrs. Groom Duke whether you, who you support, read, or who you support. Once you came yeah. to that office and you came with a need, Mrs. Groom Duke would go all above and beyond to ensure that to the best of her ability she could meet you some way it might not be all the way but she always it doesn't matter who you are or who you support and uh, therefore i said to myself if, if i was to become a representative i want to be a representative that really is known for being with his people among his people almost ever present and mm -hmm. i don't want to be one that somebody would say me and see you since the last election so we continued we kept that commitment from the day I got elected as a representative on the Black Rock Wim Spring Garden and that never stopped yeah. up to this point. So, and it's not just me, but because I have, you know, a cadre of committed staff, I think I could boast about the way how my office is managed. And that is in itself speaks volume. Because the management of the office and the way the office tells you what kind of leader mm -hmm. you know you are. And uh, we are very responsible people. So it makes the work easier when you have people who you can give a task and almost turn your back and know that it would be done. A lot of people see me doing a lot of charitable work and believe that I get some kind mm -hmm. of gold spoon or something sure. but what you would see us doing we put in the work we yeah. don't just wait for handouts we actually my officers they the especially the women in the office mm -hmm. they would always come together and they're always looking to see how could we raise funds what can we do and you would see us doing different things from time to time so come friday for example we are having our annual cookout and that cookout, we are hoping that we can sell about 200 tickets at $50 mm -hmm. so that you, you get the mats there. And so we are asking to be Onions, that cookout would be at our district office in Glen Road. And we are saying it's not, I know some people, yes, the food is very delicious. I know they enjoy <laughs> the meal, but it's really a contribution of $50. And so even if you don't feel like eating your fasting during the lunch, you can still contribute at $50, which goes a long way. I could tell you, for instance, just on Thursday, we'll be doing a check distribution 
to support different groups within the community and even outside of the community. And we are support because there are a number of groups coming to us for support. We don't have a facility that comes to the public purse. So we have to continue to find ways to raise funds so that we, do, we can also assist our community groups, assist our community people and those who are in need. And that is how we continue to work. Minority Leader, you said something there that, that I want to just open up a little bit. I, I know we have some pressing matters, but I think it's important for people to really understand what you just said. You said that this coming week here, you have a check distribution. So you are going to be giving assistance to various groups and so on. Now that is, is very, very pertinent because I sat and listened to a series where all the assemblymen came to the media to give account for what they, they would have done. And every single one of them spoke about not having resources and they can't help people in the community because they don't have no resources. And here it is, you, you, you are saying something totally different and, and you in the minority. Because we understand the importance of not just throwing our hands up, it's about being innovating ourselves. We are putting in the work, we are doing the fundraisers so that we can help others. So, you know, some people believe that the only way you can give help is by depending on the public purse and if they don't have the public purse at their disposal to <laughs> do all manner of of wrong wrong things <laughs> then they they basically handicap and i'm saying no there are ways and means that very transparent that you can raise funds and be able to still do a little goes a long way and that is the relationship i have with my my residents, my community groups, I, they know it wouldn't be the world of assistance, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, drop, drop this full basket. Yeah. Yeah, you know something. We therefore try to see as best look at the, the request and see, you know, out of the different requests, what might be the most impactful and how we can afford it. And that's how we treat with those things. You know, I, I also want to talk very briefly about the office of the minority leader and mm -hmm. I, I, it's something i try i know the public servants they are trying their best and we are now in month three we are in march and i'm telling all of tobago that the minority office has been without garbage bags hmm. without soap to basically clean cleaning items Hmm. For the last five months, five months, we have been going without basic necessity. Yesterday, I had persons in my office and I couldn't even offer them a bottle of water. I had to send to the shop and purchase the water out of my own pocket. And I mean, I don't mind doing it. But at the same time, if the office is an office, a functionary of the state, hmm. then I believe it ought to be supported by the state. I am seeing... For example, right now, the office only has have two technical positions. When you look at the different offices within the THA, notwithstanding their communication unit, their IT unit, mm -hmm. their legal units. Data, units and all of mm -hmm. them with properly staff, in the office of the secretary and the assistant secretary, they have added positions. I think the secretary now has a secretariat of almost over seven persons and well paid. Wow. and the office of the assistant secretary which is really a, a office that does not really carry any significant portfolio within uh, the the structure of the THA and they have now about four or five staff technical people and we are hamstrung with only two persons to assist the minority leader who has to provide service and support for all of the people we have to treat with being able to respond to every motion we have to be able to deal with all kind of legal stuff and we don't even have legal personnel on board we have to treat with communications we have to do press release we have to do press conference we don't even have a communications person and we are doing all of this notwithstanding the challenges 
hmm. notwithstanding the fact that I've written to the chief administrator, who the last time I checked, the office of is the chief administrator is responsible for all of the Tobago House of Assembly, of which the office of the minority forms a part. Mm -hmm. Yet, I've written over a month now, and I've not even had the courtesy from this public office, not even the courtesy of an acknowledgement, much less a date to meet. And I'm wondering if the office of the minority is a plague to be stayed away from when we are simply having challenges and we are trying to meet to treat with those challenges huh. so that we can better be positioned to serve the people of Tobago. We are not here for friends. We are not here for fame, but we are here to do a job to which the president of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago appointed me in her judgment as a person best positioned and best able to carry out that function of minority yeah. leader. And therefore the office, not me, not Kelvon, but the office should be given the kind of respect that it rightly deserves. Wow. Well, folks, sometimes when, when we hear these things and you know people look on from the outside and they just see things happening and, and they don't understand what it takes to actually get uh, what seems to be simple things and simple initiatives off the ground. And, and one thing I think we can be, be grateful for is the, the corporate um, environment as well, who have been very gracious in some instances, who continue to super, support. And it speaks volumes to, to what you are doing, even at a district level, that, that people are realizing that it is from a genuine standpoint mm -hmm. and that, that others are also benefiting from it. So, I mean, I want to encourage you to keep it up. I mean, the, the journey yes. is a long one, it's a hard fight, but uh, we know what happens when you, you perform the, the reward for good work. is more work. And we, we're not <laughs> afraid of the work. We are not afraid of the work. And for those people who like to always go back into the past and say, well, this one did that, so this would do that and we should do that. I am saying shame on you tonight because if you were part of a, of, a, of a party and part of a movement and an organization that says, let us change the way how things are supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. And when now you're seeing your own people doing the things that you were criticizing, and saying, well, that is how it was done, then shame on you, because that means you didn't genuinely believe in the change that you were, you're crying out for. And this is what is really causing this administration to continue to misperform in the way they are performing in such a bad way, because this administration has come in with political bad mind. Hmm. And it is a bad mind and a kind of way of, it's my time now, vengeance. Let me get back at them. Yeah. Let me suffer them. And that is what they've been doing to a lot of Tobagonians. You've seen it in the way how they would have come and just surreptitiously fire people. Hmm. They, they, they barely, the ink barely was dried when they started to just fire people. Yeah. And in some instances, the letter didn't even, they had to rescind the full set of letters because it just didn't make sense. And now, slowly but surely, the chickens are coming home to roost because they now have to pay these people that they have just fired in the most unlawful way. Yeah. And Tobagonians would get, get to realize that it's millions and millions of dollars that is now going to pay people who this wicked administration decided to just send, send home without reason and without just cause. Hmm. And it's the same thing they have done to the, the, the contractors. We are going to be spending millions and millions and millions of dollars in legal fees because when a contractor takes you to court for monies owed and interest is applied, we recognize that this administration would have been reckless, careless in their bad mind. Hmm. Wow. Folks, we, we want to take a short break, pay some bills, and when we come back, we have some serious, serious matters that we are going to be discussing so stay locked on stay locked on and continue to share the live this evening we'll be back shortly
You can now get whatever you need whenever you need it anywhere in Tobago with Tapago. Your meals, medication, groceries, and shopping all delivered directly to you. No more hassle, no more stress. Get the Tapago app today on Google Play or Apple App Store. That's T A P P O G O, and let us deliver to you. Check our website at www.tapogo.app or call the experts at 494 T O G O and 484 4746. Tapago, relax. We will get it to you. Tapago's at your service. Coconuts Cafe, the buffet restaurant that specializes in all your tasty local dishes for breakfast and for lunch. Breakfast includes coconut bake and sada roti served with chokers, bulge oil, and sausages in tomato sauce. Not forgetting beef and cheese pies, shepherd's pie, macaroni pie, and rice in various styles. Meats served in a variety of flavors, garden salads, and pasta salads. All this accompanied by fruit juices, coconut water, your choice of a great combination to appease your taste buds. So call us today to order as we are here to accommodate your busy schedules or if you are having a cooking day off. It's gonna go And folks, we are back. I, we want to get right into to an issue here in terms of dealing with it. I, I always remember minority leader growing up. One thing for sure you were taught at home, in your community, at school, was respect for your elders. There was a time when, when, when you were even afraid to look at, at a senior person in the eye because it may have been considered as disrespectful based on your posturing. We continue to see a chief secretary that for some reason seems to have a problem with, with as he likes to call them, old people and all kind of uh, 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 comments. We heard some statements being made and we even saw supporters of the administration come out in the media and, and, and literally call on him to apologize. Uh, yet again, we have another scathing attack by the chief secretary on our senior citizens, uh, referring to them as people who knocking on casket <laughs> and that kind of thing. Your thoughts on this? Well, the chief secretary, plain and simple, is a classless young man, very disrespectful, hmm. has absolutely no respect for authority, <sighs> has absolutely no respect for his seniors, and we continue to see time and time, over and over, this gentleman believes that he is some kind of emperor anointed by some deity and that he therefore mm. is walking on some on on air and therefore yes. his air is in the rear and he has absolutely no respect no class no decorum because we saw it in the house where you referred to seniors as people deserving of going and rub their knee Sub and, and sub their knee and yeah 
and and then you you're hearing it again at the last meeting where you're talking about he don't want nobody who about to so is is and it's so childish it's so immature hmm and I, I don't know if seniors would continue to tolerate because I saw one commentator being very offended by the chief secretary's comment and indicated that a number of seniors seem to be extremely offended as well. And it's time seniors also call on this chief secretary to apologize yeah. to them because he has been very dis... I don't know what is his issue with hmm. people that is over 60. I don't know who senior rubbed him wrong in his young days, his, his, what traum, senior traumatic moment he has. <laughs> but this young man continues to be very disrespectful yeah. to his elders. Yeah. And respect is something that we pride as Tobagonians, especially mm -hmm. for elders. You learn that as a little child growing up in yeah. the community. And in fact, anybody that was considered senior could discipline you. And if you're in the road. <laughs> and a complain to get licks again. again. That was the kind of... Plan. Yeah. So, I don't know what is wrong with this young boy, but it's very disrespectful and very classless. And, and I mean, we are seeing now, and I think a lot of people have started to, to realize and to identify with it. The, the reality is that these persons that you refer to are the people who would have toiled and, and sweat to build Tobago through the years of development. They were public servants. They were contract workers. They worked in infrastructure, agriculture, tourism sector, drivers, tour operators. They, they made meaningful contributions to bring Tobago to the place where even him as an individual is now sitting to govern. Correct. And, and the thing about it, the measure of a man is really in the way how, we, and they say if you want to know the value of a society is in the way it treats mm -hmm. its seniors. And if your leader has yeah. absolutely no respect for, for its senior citizens who would have contributed in such a meaningful way, then that, that tells you um, the type of person that you're dealing with. And it's quite unfortunate. Uh, that this this individual continues to disrespect our valued seniors in that kind of way. Mm -hmm. And, I, I, you know, I'm surprised that we as Tobagonians continue to allow him yes. to get away with that, that we don't highlight it and we are not mm -hmm. calling on him to apologize because I think that is worthy of an apology. Yep. Very much so. And, and, and we see... I mean, the, the, the arrogance with the so, chief secretary. So, but but it is an arrogance, not just with the chief secretary, and I guess the rest of them. Is Trump and follow the, suit. Tr Trump and follow yeah. suit, because you're seeing arrogance throughout. Look at the secretary of infrastructure. Hmm. And I'm seeing them waving a, waving a red flag like if they have won something. I want to big onions to understand what would have transpired during this entire process, because... Point number one, the conversation they are trying to take to you is that they are trying to build roads and the PNM don't want them to build roads. Absolute hogwash. Lie number Absolute one. Absolute lie. In his own phrasing. As a matter of fact, the PNM has been very consistent in terms of our, our discussion with respect to the road yeah. development. We will lie to, and I want to be going to understand that. This administration lied to us and told us that they had some emergency for Carnival and they needed to fast track a process to develop four roads. And we knew from day one that that was a lie because if no Carnival could be an emergency and if the Carnival was the emergency, then Carnival came and went and it would mean Still. therefore that uh -huh. you, you didn't need the roads again because you had the Carnival without the roads. So you lied to us. And because you lied to us, the PNM understood there was more in the mortar than the pestle. Yeah. So we started to ask the questions as to the process and whether you follow the law. And the PNM has always stood on the side of the law. So yeah. you're free to do your development. But all we were saying is follow the lawful process when it, when, with respect to procurement, with respect to 
procuring your statutory requirements, your tongue and country, your CC, and that played out. The people who would have challenged in court, everyone who challenges administration in court won the EMA mm -hmm. because a public servant in the Tobago House of Assembly who is, yeah. who is in charge of forestry raised a red flag, blew a whistle, and the EMA took it up. And that matter was challenged, was taken to the court, and the court found favor with the EMA's argument, and an injunction was granted. On that injunction being granted, and on that injunction being lifted, it costed you, the people of Tobago, $1.1 million. Dollars. You know what $1.1 $1. million dollars could do? Yeah. For all the people who were waiting on food card, for all the people who were waiting on house grant mm -hmm. for all the people who waiting and can't apply even now for some home repair grant because it is on pause that is one million dollars that could have helped at least 500 tobagonians get twenty thousand mm dollars -hmm. you understand that is one million dollars that could have helped at least a hundred tobagonians with food support yep so when these people are wasting away your money because they don't want to follow the law because of their arrogance, understand that when the court lifts that injunction, it is no win because hmm. it is your taxpaying money that would have been wasted away if only they had followed the law. Yeah. And it's the same thing. So when that injunction was lifted, it was lifted under certain conditions. And instead of following the conditions, this unlawful law breaking dishonest THA led by a dishonest chief secretary decided to flout the law again hmm. and the, the persons who they have now bulldozed their homes and encumbered upon their property took that to the court and the court granted them an injunction based on the fact that the road itself required a town country approval and the road did not have that Hmm. So what we have now coming out of this process, I am sure, is that they have to pay further cost. And we will ask that yes. question. So when all their followers, their jokers who hmm. like to go on Facebook waving red flag, we would ask them how much that red flag costs. Because that is further cost that would have been incurred that the THA is spending because they just don't want to follow the law. And... So that is waived now, but that was waived on an agreement. And that is what... That's the part I want you to bring people. out. So this is... The <laughs> agreement is that because the Hearns are basically in the middle of the road, you are not, until the substantive matter is tried and adjudicated upon, they are not to encumber, encroach, to threaten, to even go near the property. So it means that this road will continue to be an unfinished road until that substantive matter is heard. Hmm. And all of this could have been avoided had the THA followed the, the law. law. But I want you to play something. There's a clip because I want to show Tobago. And this is why I'm telling you, Tobago, the chief secretary that you have is very dishonest. He's disingenuous and he's not a man to his word. I want you to play that clip where the chief secretary gave a commitment to Tobago that what he described as happening <laughs> down at the airport, airport, where persons were removed from their property, will not happen again and will not happen in a manner to which he believed they were wronged at the airport. So but Mr. here Direct, it is. Uh, cue it up. So I want you to play that because here it is. The hypocrisy. This hypocritical yeah. chief secretary yeah. who said this will never happen again. Here it is. They are, whether the man is a squatter, whether he's a rightful owner or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here it is. In the dead of a night, this same chief secretary, aided and abetted by his also equally dishonest um, secretary of infrastructure, goes down there and starts to bulldoze yep. through their contractor, the man place, without even warning no conversation, no consultation. <laughs> and then when the when they trouble hit them, they want to blame the PNM. The PNM is simply saying, follow the law, obey the law. Because if you don't obey the law, it tells about your character. 
it tells us that you will break the law and flout the law when you believe nobody's looking. Mr. Director, let's, let's hear that clip. Move as seamless and as easy as possible. But let me be clear that no other development on the island of Tobago should ever happen that way again. There must, there must be a hum, humane way to do the development. And yes, no one is saying that a new airport isn't needed. What we are arguing is that there is a better way to manage the change and to manage people and families. I, so penultimately, some weeks ago I spoke, the matter came up in a, in a previous town hall meeting about the, the lands in Smithfield. I have just started, well the road in Smithfield, so you know the road in Smithfield is going away, it's sort of like a bocus, it's bad. Um, rapid response, they have evacuated their building and moved there. So, <laughs> so that was the chief secretary talking <laughs> about the manner in which the people down at the Crown Point mm -hmm. airport was treated and saying it's not that they're not a, so in that instance he's he's saying that they are not in the way of and cannot be accused of mm -hmm. blocking the airport development and progress for Tobago but what they are against is the manner in which the people were treated right mm -hmm. and Tobagonians accepted that argument but here it is the same chief secretary now is basically running somebody from a place they have lived for, for almost all their life. Mm. And he's now telling Tobagonians that not to accept that he's being wicked and heartless. Wow. But it is the PNM somehow that trying to trying to stymie the development of Tobago and stymie mm. them from the road. Well, I'm saying just like him. In the airport situation, we are not against the road. If they want to build, they could build a road in the sea and all. <laughs> we are not against the road. But all we are saying is follow the law exactly. and also respect the rights of every Tobagonian. And, and minority leader, this... You're not hearing the chief secretary really telling the people the, 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 the various visits he made, the, the way they tried to bully the man... And, and, and the way the Secretary of Infrastructure come out to make the gentleman look like if he, he is the one doing something wrong. But, but the, and that, that is the point. So I'm not here to try the matter because that matter is in the court. And all we, as I continue to say, when it comes to this road, we had a better option. Mm -hmm. And that is undisputed. Because the option that was available to this THA, and they must explain that to the people of Tibet. Mm -hmm is why would you choose the option to spend $70 million that you claim not to have to now encounter all these trouble that you're having because you don't have CC, you rush the road, then you meet somebody already occupying the lands, you now have to go to court now to move the people off of the lands. Mm -hmm. When there was a process where the central government was going to manage this process, spend their own money, give to you a dual carriageway. And I want to explain that to Tobagonians. Dual carriageway doesn't mean just one, one up, one, one, up, down. one down. Yeah. It means you have two lanes up mm -hmm. and two lanes down. There's a utility corridor that you would have put all your pipelines and your electricity lines and telecommunication lines so that you don't have to have anything hanging in the air. There would have been on the sides, drains and rails. If you drive that along that road, based on what we have seen, there's no rails. Hmm. There's a big precipice. I don't know how they plant it, where they just pile stones like the head and good. No kind of engineering going into it. It's just madness happening down there. In fact, up to now, Tobagonians have not even been given the courtesy of a design. For all those people hmm. supporting the road, do you know where the road going? All the people who are telling me about development because they just hear a road. None of them don't even know where the road taking them. Nobody knows the beginning properly nobody and nobody knows the knows end. The end. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And what is the overall goal? Because if it's against traffic alleviation, then why is this road going right back into the narrow store, be a local road? 
if you're trying to get away back from to traffic, the bottleneck you get a bypass yeah. and that is what the central government option was giving you a bypass all the way down to the airport that mm -hmm. would have been a true access point diversion mm -hmm. point away from the busy milford road thoroughfare and that is what you were getting you were getting connectors right back onto chauvin roundabout and all of that and the necessary ancillaries that would go with it and that was going to be at no cost to the assembly but cre but clearly somebody wanted to spend 70 million dollars mm -hmm. of the big money, big money yeah. that we do have and the question is why and who is there to benefit because when you look at the bill of quantities and you look at what they are paying when you look at what they are actually paying for hot mix to place the hot mix mm -hmm. every contractor both in Trinidad and tobago will be jumping from here to the moon because this is the only place in the country <laughs> where you are paying somebody two thousand seven hundred dollars wow. In Trinidad, the average going rate is about $900 to $1,100 to place hot mix. That is the going rate. <laughs> and in Tobago, this wicked, dishonest administration is paying $2,700 for hot mix. That is almost double and triple times what is being wow, paid for wow, in Trinidad. Wow. And I want Tobagoans to understand the highway robbery that is going on down on that project. So when they're telling you $70 million, that project could have been done for almost forty million dollars if they had paid the rates that they're supposed to be paying, and okay. they have not been able to dispute it. You know what they're telling you, Tobagoans? When we ask about that, they're saying because it's a design build finance, mm -hmm. and it means mm -hmm. that they are deferring the payments, so they have it to pay at a more. higher rate. But how come you're paying almost double and triple the rate, hmm. even if it's deferred payment? Even if there's some interest, how come the interest is so high that you are paying not 50%, not 25%, but 100 and almost 200% more than what is the going rate? Hmm. And these are the questions that we have been asking. You have people, there's a contract that has been given out to a contractor down at Crown Point to do the Pigeon Point access road phases. We have not seen one design. There's yeah. no design. There's no CC clearance. They have not applied to town and country. They have not applied to EME. And that involves the mangroves down at Pigeon mm -hmm. Point. Yet you handed out in a rush. Yeah, that within was emergency. Couple weeks, that was emergency. Within a couple of weeks, you evaluate this contract. And all we are asking to see the financials, because I understand that the contractor up to this day can't start the project because they just don't have the money. Hmm. So how you could give somebody a contract where they do have the money but say that they met the financial requirements if they met the financial requirements it means that they would have been have have to the... be able to demonstrate right. that they have the money in the bank to do the project and it would have been on that what that would have been one of the main criteria upon which you gave the the awarded the project hmm. but if the contractor now don't have the money to do the project how come they were able to qualify as a competent financial body minority leader uh, before before we even go to, to another issue i i just want you to, to explain something to us this evening because i do think a lot of of us in tobago understand when the the central government allocates or gives tobago its allocation and we hear this administration telling deliberate falsehoods that they're not getting the money, they're having yeah. less and so on. There is also allocations to various central government ministries, Marie, which are supposed to be used in Tobago. Before, before you go there, let, mm. us, carry, let us clear up that, that, lie. that lie again. Yeah. Because this administration is very good at lying. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's something called projecting in psychology. And I recognize the hapless, coolest assistant secretary who used to play union leader and now lose his voice. Yeah, yeah. Because that is all, all they are is they are mocking pretenders, mocking, M-O-C-K-I-N-G. Just to be clear. Pretenders, just to be clear. They are mocking pretenders. And this 
clueless man I saw him call, who, saying who is li who who from the PNM is liars right. and calling mm -hmm. out names as liars. But one thing they cannot accuse us of is bringing information that we cannot back up. Mm -hmm. Because to this day, Every day, everything we have placed on the table, they are unable to refute mm -hmm. because we come with facts, we come with receipts. Every and when time. we speak, we speak from a from a background of information yep. because the people of Tobago are fed up with you all and they are giving us the information. Mm -hmm. So when we put something out in the public domain, it has been properly verified. But this administration is very, very good at lying. And they, you know, the thing about liars is that they have absolutely no memory. Yeah. So they will say one thing today and then they will say another. And I, I, it's just, I don't think, do we have the clip? But there is the chief secretary who was on record as boasting, boasting to Tobagonians that That's he's true. better than Joel as a secretary of finance. Because here it is, the government of the day was paying the previous administration, mm -hmm. sending their allocations month, month to, to month, month, which was not in accordance with the law. And he was boasting that Emperor Fala, I, Emperor, Fali. Fa, yeah. Emperor Fali, I am able to get this administration to now send the money on time. Mm, as per the law. As per the law. Yeah. He said that. He said they were doing it two months and the ministers, the Minister of Finance has committed to giving them quarterly as per the law. Mm -hmm. And the, the political leader of the PNM was able to demonstrate that by facts reading out yeah. the releases and the warrants. Yeah. And showing how they are receiving. Yet you have the Deputy Chief Secretary mm -hmm. in a Facebook post telling unsuspecting Tobagonians that they are struggling because mm -hmm. they're not getting their money on yeah. time and they're month to month lies. trying to get people to be sorry for them lies mm -hmm. big fat unadulterated lies lies lies, lies. Liar. liars and, and they can refute if, that they believe if they speak their lies with confidence then you would believe them but mm -hmm. we have the receipts because one day they are saying that they are getting their money on time and we believe them because we have the evidence where they're getting the money on time. Mm -hmm. The other lie they are telling to big onions is that all of a sudden they are not getting they they are not getting the um, the amount of money yes. that the PNM used to get. What lies lies. So they're trying to give people the impression like the PNM had more money to mm -hmm. spend. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you to big onions. This is public record. Yeah. We dealt with it and right here on the program. To, this administration has received and is to receive and spend by the end of this fiscal. They would spend over $7 billion. Mm -hmm. They have already spent $5 billion. What do they have to show for it? Yeah. How have they transformed your life? Are you better off? Do you feel like you have gotten at least some kind of advancement from that five billion dollars that have been spent and when we come by september they would have spent over 7.5 billion dollars that is 25 percent more than any pnm administration would have received in their time because they are receiving on average every fiscal package 2.5 billion dollars hmm. So when they're telling you they don't have no money, tell them they lie because they get more money than every other PNM administration would have gotten. And for the, in fact, the chief secretary continues to contradict himself because here he is arguing with the central government, telling the central government that the former administrations did not receive their entire allocation. So it means that the PNM was able, even not getting the full, full amount that the government to still do, to still maintain <laughs> a, a development trajectory that showed growth, mm -hmm. and they are getting even more money than the PNM. They are getting all the allocation, and they are recording negative growth. They yeah. can't even grow the economy. So you are getting more money, yet agriculture in decline, construction in decline. Tourism in decline. They're so desperate now <laughs> that they're taking people who on a ship that haven't even stepped foot into Big One, counting them as visitors. Mm -hmm. And this this 
chief secretary who believed that he brighter than everybody want to tell me I don't know why he's a tourist. <laughs> so I want the chief secretary to go in the Tizarus and let him look up what is a tourist. Because clearly, if you are counting people who are not on a boat, mm -hmm. who have not stepped off that boat, and just want to, you want, because what benefit is that to the society? Mm -hmm. Even if you count the number. How does that reflect? How does that Yeah, impact? what's the impact? Because if they don't even at least jump, come off and walk along yeah, Esplanade buy a, and buy a, buy a band, band or buy a band, yeah. how does that benefit the people? Record tourists arrival. And you they boasting about record tourists. Everything is done. The facts are clear. <sighs> Tobago has, under this current administration, record two consecutive decline in, in the growth. economy it was two percent and then four percent yep we are seeing Consistent that we decline. Seeing restriction the, the the labor force in the private sector is declining because more and more people are leaving the private sector some of them are leaving the island mm. because they are limited to no opportunity outside Correct. of the tha and this same chief secretary who was the one talking about the THA employing too many people have now resorted to have yeah. to absorb more people exactly. because of their incompetence and their inability to grow the private sector. The private sector is at its lowest ebb. There's no confidence. People do not want to invest. The banks do not want to lend. This island that he continues to describe as the greatest little island mm. Oh, is being oh. run by the worst, most <laughs> incompetent set of people. Yeah. And that is a fact. And for those who are talking about development, what development? I, I would love to understand see that. what is development. Yeah, yeah. No, because for the dishonest Tobagoans, I see this again, this mocking secretary, the one who assistant secretary, mm -hmm. the one who used to pretend to be a union leader yes. and pretend and that neutral. he cared about workers. Yeah talking about some lights as development imagine some street lights that's, and that is what you responsibility jump into to, and advance into to <sighs> after you have spent 7.5 billion dollars mm -hmm. you advance into to that street lights is your 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 accomplishment, your accomplishment. Yeah. while you have you have the indoor facility this Stagnant. Mm -hmm. You have the com the center up in Charlottesville, which is your electoral district. Nothing that happened. dead. Um, Goodwood Pavilion. Pavilion. Good turn a, past a pasture mm -hmm. for sheep and goat. Canaan. No, Canaan. Dead. The people had to go on the wall and write mm -hmm. all kind of graffiti yep. to get Ole to do something down there. Ole I failures. want to know where the development is. They are a bunch of failures. And I gave them a score, and the rate they're going, all of them look like they'll get zero this time. Because they have been failing, failing, failing. They are incompetent, they are unfit to lead, and all they're doing is bringing pain and mayhem on Tobagonians. And, and minority leader, if you observe something, many of them have become very silent now in the media. Before, they would be out there and trying to... What we've been hearing now is nothing, just silence and... and Education going down. We've seen what's happening with school violence, you know, here in the voice of the secretary. Agriculture, we don't know what's even taking place with that. We've seen all kind of MOUs and, and agreements signing. And what is the benefit to Tobago? As I said, they are pretenders. They yeah. are pretenders. All they know to do no is benefit. Splash, and there's no substance about them. Imagine you keep a political meeting and as a government in office, managing the affairs of Tobagonians in a state that I've just dis described where hmm. construction is done, agriculture in a mess, tourism in a mess. You think they would come and advance some kind of plan, plan. to inspire people and give people hope. And all you went there to do is cost the PNM who yeah. beat 14 one. <laughs> you just beat the PNM 14 years. one. And your best report to the people the first time you take in platform, you have not shared your vision, you have not shared your philosophy, and you just want people to follow you because you name Farley Chavez Augustine, mm -hmm. and because you feel your middle name is some middle name of, rep of repute. That is where you absolute think. failure, no, no substance, plan. no absolutely plan. no substance. And then the one thing that they believe that they could throw in the face of Tobago, now, but Tobago is not, not, not biting that because their definition of autonomy means hmm. independence and uh, secession white is on record as saying he's a secessionist mm -hmm. yep yep 
and Dr. Faith B. Israel, when she started her narrative, she started on a pathway of secession. Mm -hmm. And when she recognized that Tobagonians were rejecting that, that what they were advancing, they started to come more to the middle and then they jumped on, on mm -hmm. autonomy and using autonomy as this trump card. Yes, we in Tobago want our rightful place among this and equal standing in the relationship that is Trinidad and Tobago. And we want more authority to treat with our issues and every Tobagonian regardless of pnm or whatever you are that is a dream of every tobago yeah. and we all would stand behind that but don't use autonomy as nothing to separate Trinidad and tobago oh, because oh. if you are about secession come out and say that exactly but you see if they say that they have to provide a plan and they they have they don't have none. any they don't have any and minority leader if you if you listen uh, the tone of, of their conversations now and, and even in the meeting on Sunday, it was like I was getting deja vu because these were the same lies they came to Tobago with in the election campaign that they never even fulfill any of them. But the, the, the question as we going to wrap up, I want to ask them because I don't really want to get in the party business, but have they registered the party? So Because I, I find it, I know they are party and they are people who like to put the cart before the horse. We mm -hmm. see it in the house mm -hmm. all the time. They have brought so many motions and have done absolutely nothing to basically initiate the, the, the policy. So they come with policy, but they have not created the structure and mm -hmm. therefore the, the thing just sit in comatose and it eventually dies. We have seen that in the house. They've yep. come with, a pol they, just recently they brought a policy to create their own transport commission. <laughs> Up to now, are waiting to see where the transport commission is can seat. Oh, what a policy where they were doing some all, all, all of the big approach, approach to social, seat, so social yeah. assessment. Up to I now. went to division of settlement sometime where they say you will have had a desk to seek some interest of my personal interest, and I didn't observe that desk. <laughs> so these are just talkers, they are mouth organs, full of chats. Hmm. and have absolutely no action in delivering the things that they promise. And we have seen it. They have promised a yep. whole heap of things. The ex gratia fall flat. They hmm. promised 10000 and they come down. Eventually, it was $1,000. Yeah. And some people, I understand, still didn't get it in some hmm. divisions. Wow. Whitey promised how many houses by now we should yes. have had a thousand house bill because he said he was delivering 400 houses every year and when we asked him how you're funding that because they just it's like talk, talk. Abaca, we even have the clip really, you have it we have that so clip. you can remind to begonians mr white. director i want you to play the clip for me uh where it begins with the the presiding officer sitting in the house so we can uh, uh the 58 seconds clip a Madam Presiding Officer, the first term that the Secretary of Finance speaks about is a period of four years, which commenced in December 2021. I am not sure if the member recognizes, but we are already halfway through year one of this term. And from the statement, the Secretary of Finance also indicated that it is the intention of his administration to commence work on the housing strategy in the second quarter of fiscal 2023, which could be sometime in January, February, or March 2023. It therefore means, Madam Presiding Officer, that based on the budget statement as presented at the end of year one, which is December 2022, no house would have been built. No, we are halfway through. Watch me work. Thanks, AJ. Watch me, Watch work. me work. Well, <laughs> if we had to judge your work, your work, brother Whitey, <laughs> you really don't even deserve a month's salary because you have not delivered any homes. In fact, you, the one home you delivered, we had to force your hand because yeah, it's only when we discovered that the the person that you would have mama guy with the hmm. house was still renting and because the media shine up that is when you run and fast track and actually provided the deserving family with the home mm -hmm. and uh, 
you now pro you have promised so many homes. I think it was two hundred homes a year, mm -hmm. and the yeah, you drop it the level. Con counselor correctly asked you how you were going because we were clear. You you have a budget. You didn't make an allocation to build those homes. You are not seeing an allocation. So how you were planning to finance it? And unless you had again perhaps some secret financier that was so <laughs> kind to just pelt the money and mm -hmm. give you for free. How did you plan to build those homes? Yeah. And that and is the question. And what arrangement you had in place that you were so confident? To be honest, you had to understand what <laughs> really happening in the stillness of the night. And oh. where, where eyes can't meet and hearts can't see. Yeah, them. yeah. Because what would have given him the confidence mm -hmm. that at that time, at that time, that you could get funding to build 200 homes when you did not make an allocation for it. Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. And I would... Cut before the horse. Cut before the horse, but clearly there was some arrangement mm -hmm. that perhaps Brewing. was in place. Mm -hmm. Brewing. But thankfully you have an alert minority that keeps them on their toes so they know once they miss yep. and we catch their hands in the cookie jar, they will be exposed. Mm -hmm. And and minority leader, what before we go? What was what was amusing uh, when I looked at that meeting is that each one of them when they came gave to Bego an excuse as to why we're not performing. Even the chief secretary came up and by his own admission said that we wasn't we didn't show what it is we came in to really do and, and we did we we didn't make a proper assessment and so it's like they're begging the population now to forgive. Their, their sins as it were. Even the Secretary Whitey, he came up and started saying that he is receiving less and doing more. And, and I don't know how. As far as the, the, the Secretary of Settlements need to explain what is going on with the grant, the repair, the home repair program because mm -hmm. I understand people are going there to sign up and they're telling them the program is on hold so they are unable to actually that is my understanding. And if it's not so, I'm subject to correction. Mm -hmm. But this is what I'm being told by persons. They are going to the division to apply for home repair and they're telling them they, pro they, they have to wait. They are not taking any applications at this time. Hmm. <sighs> but yet we, are spent, we just spent a million dollars on legal fees because their secretary refused to follow the law. And that is what Tobagonians need to understand. The crux of the matter is that the reason why this administration ended up in so many challenges with that road is because a secretary Continue to break the law. deliberately disregarded the rule of law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Folks, we... we as usual, we, we always ask where the time goes. Yes. <laughs> I, Minority Leader, I don't know if you have any quick closing remark, and then we, we head out. Well, I would simply like to close by reminding Tobagonians why and how we got here. We got here because uh, there was a group of persons who advanced to you uh, that they were better prepared to govern Tobago in a way that uh, you believe that needed to be able to be governed. So they advanced, they would come with a different style of governance that would, would take you to another level that would advance your interest in, an, in a better way. They mm -hmm. advance themselves as, as doing things differently and better, not differently and the same. But what we have seen so far, they have demonstrated is that they are really doing things differently worse. They are doing things worse than the previous administration. They are not doing things same as they are doing things worse. They have um, fired over 500 Tobagonians. Yeah. They have stifled your contractors who had to send home over 1,000 workers. Mm -hmm. They have refused to give your contractors work, your Tobago-based contractors. They have blatantly refused. And they are now finding work in Trinidad. The Tobago contractors could find work in Trinidad, <laughs> yeah. but they cannot find work in, in Tobago, Tobago because this administration has deliberately blacklisted them. Mm -hmm. They have 
derail the tourism sector, derail the agricultural sector. They have public servants living on the edge in every single division, division. in every single unit. Yeah. People are frustrated. People are on the edge because they just don't know if their contracts will be renewed. People are on the edge to associate. Yep. People are on the edge to even speak out. Because they have been victimized. To stand up to talk to people in the road. Everything. People are afraid to, to even comment talk on to Facebook. People are afraid to be in same social groups as me just because they believe if they are seen associated, they will be victimized. And is this the Tobago that we voted for? And I know the answer is a resounding no. The change that Tobagonians expected, the, the change we just didn't get. We got mm -hmm. shillings instead of a dollar. Mm hmm. We got exactly. empty barrel instead of positivity and, hmm. and influence flowing. This administration has been a big disgrace, if you ask me. And, and, and true, true to form and well said, I, I just want to encourage persons to learn to read, practice reading, because many people... Uh, still, some of their naysayers talking about the injunction. But we're encouraging you, Tobago, go and read the judgment, and you will understand that this is not a win for, for, for the THA or anything, because there are clear instructions laid out which still have to be adjudicated but, but, but over. But the point is, and just for the Tobago, an mm -hmm. injunction is not a permanent thing. Yeah, yeah. That's why it's an injunction. It's a temporary arrangement yeah, until the read, substantive matter has been heard. Mm -hmm. And in this instance, what would have happened? The two parties agreed that, exactly. that basically you can go forward with doing what you have to do, mm -hmm. but you cannot encroach on the piece of area that yes. is in contention. <laughs> so to raise a red flag as if the THA win, win the matter. there's something or somebody because see them, they're trying to put the political leader of the PNM as if he lost something. Yeah, yeah. The political leader of the PNM Foolish was narratives. never involved in this matter. Foolish this narratives. Case. Foolish narratives. And to believe that the PNM is involved in this matter, the only interest the PNM has in this matter is the interest of you, the Tobagonians, and the interest of the rule of law, which is to tell this administration stop being lawbreakers mm -hmm. we've heard them on an audio recording plotting planning to break the law what yeah, more evidence yeah, all the world yeah, and that yeah. these people are lawbreakers mm -hmm. and all we are saying is stop break yep. the law that's it folks thanks for staying locked on i know we we end up there in the air everybody on on fire uh, i know many of you are, are glued to your tv now taking in the information but I just want to say one thing to you. Next week will be no different. So we look forward to seeing you next week. I'm Marlon David saying good night and have a wonderful evening. Stay prayed up. Let's cover ourselves out there. Have a wonderful night.